Hello, ma'am. May I have your name? Kayla. Kayla? Yes. Nice to meet you, Kayla. You're here with ATM Fox. Welcome to All Time Media. How old are you, Kayla? 28. 28? You're young. I guess. <laughs> Where are you from? Pottstown. Pottstown, yeah. PA? Yep. Okay. How far is that from here? Um, it's 45 minutes, but if you take the bus and all that to get here, it takes about three hours. Okay. <laughs> three hours in the bus? Yeah, yeah. the bus and two, two trains. Is, is that what brought you out here to Kensington? You took the bus out here? Yep, every time. What made you want to come to Kensington? Well, uh, <laughs> honestly, the shit is, stuff out here is cheaper than you can get at home. So, and you got it, everything is a little, everything you can make money with out here, so. It's a right. easier than at, at home. Are you currently addicted to any substances? Yeah. Yep. What's your drug of choice? Fentanyl. Hmm. How often do you intake this substance? Probably about every hour on the hour. <laughs> How do you use it? I smoke it and I shoot it. Mm -mm. How are you affording your addiction? As I said, it's everything's, everything's, everything is, you know, has a price out here. So you scrap or you boost and bring it here and you sell it. But so everything's cheap too. So you never get much for it. <laughs> right. How much would you say you're making a day? Um, on a good day, we make $150, but <laughs> on the weekends, and yesterday was a Sunday, it's kind of really slow, so about 20 to 30, and that's, so I, you know, um, for two habits, that's, that's not a lot. How long have you been stuck out here? This time, uh, we've been about here two, I've been here two weeks, about this time. You come out here at least three times a week. Because at home, you know, there's a lot of addictions at home that aren't being fed right now. So somebody's got to come out here and get it. Okay, so you're roughly fresh out here, but how long were you using at home? Um, this time since January. I just got out of I just got out of prison in January. Okay. Started again right away, but entirely I've been doing drugs since I was 16. Since you were at 16. 16. Mm -hmm. Oh. Okay. Who introduced you? What was that? Who introduced you? Friends. Yeah, um, my family. Uh, my dad's an addict too, so I mean, it was always a part of my life. No, um, he's an he's an addict as well. So, uh, methamphetamines. It's always, you know, <laughs> it's gonna get loud here now. So I'm sorry you had to grow up like that. All right. Um. Did that affect you? Yeah, a lot. Childhood? How did it affect you? Um, well, growing up with addicts' parents, they weren't around or, you know, you don't, you don't really have your necessities because everything goes to what they're addicted to. So, uh -huh. <laughs> and then the mood much, swings was definitely something. You grew up pretty much less fortunate, huh? Yeah. Glad to hear that, Kayla. Um, I see you got tattoos. Yeah, a little couple pieces. You're very spiritual. Yeah, or? definitely. You can definitely say that. All right. What's your uh, higher power? Um, I can't say it's a whole higher power. It's one of those things I got to see it to believe in. You know, one of the things I do know I do believe in is karma and. You know, the whole what goes around comes around, and you know. Right. I'm, I'm, I'm assuming you you keep a good slate out here. I try. <laughs> right. Um, boosting is how you make your way. Oh. Scrapping mostly Scrapping. copper, you know, stuff like that. But um, yeah, boosting is another thing. Well, what's the scrapping like? Scrapping, you know, well, here it's a little better. You know, you got a lot of abandoned houses and things like that. <laughs> like that, huh? It's, it's, it's a little annoying sometimes. Now you've been out here two weeks. You got to 
Yeah. Get the H out of here. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Don't you think so? Yeah. Um, been. I think I just got my whole mm. purse robbed yesterday. So mm. finally, finally lost everything out here. So. <laughs> You know, kind of been holding it down for the most part, you know, minding right. my P's and Q's, but, you know, they finally got me. Right. Is that like the, is that like the craziest thing that happened to you out here so far? Oh, no, um, craziest thing, I guess, would have to be that, the, uh, well, yeah, I guess it comes along about being robbed, but this girl, uh, wanted to trade five ones for a five and this snapped on me said i said something and just started beating the shit out of me <laughs> and so i took the rest of my money and the thirty dollars oh and God. like that that's one of the craziest things or the shooting that happened down there at the bar or the car chase that ended up in this guy like slamming his car into the brick building which i was almost about to walk into wow so. within two weeks you witnessed all of that huh yep this that, time, this trip, yeah. That doesn't scare you. You only been out here two weeks. Um, robbed at gunpoint, but that's not even scary. What? Um, I didn't think he was gonna shoot. <laughs> so, but yeah, two weeks. It's a lot in two weeks, but. How did you get out of here the first time? Um, a friend brought me out here. He uh he he actually moved out here, so I come and visit him, and he brought me out here for the first time because you know he said. He said stuff's cheap and it's easy. Okay. I, I said, how did how did you get out of here though? Oh, how do I how did I get out? Yeah, how did you get out of Kensington? Oh, um, same way. I think I just take the bus home. I mean, I live in okay. Kansas City at home. I'm homeless here or there, so I mean, it's just you're, you're homeless there to too. Yeah. Where's your family? Um. <sighs> a pain, they're pains in my asses. My, uh, my mom took my kids while I was in jail. They, uh, she just took for emergency custody, so, it's a whole big, long story. I have two kids, they're one and two years old, and my mom's a bitch, but she took my kids, so, she don't, she doesn't let me anywhere near them, they don't answer my phone calls or anything, so. Sorry to hear that. Sorry <laughs> to hear that. How old are your kids? One and two, said. What's their names? My youngest is Isabel, and my oldest is Dakota. They're both girls. Oh. Yep. Plan on getting back in their lives eventually? Yeah, I absolutely am. I was actually just saying yesterday about I'm going to be looking into a rehab. Cause I'm, I'm I'm about tired of this stuff. So, right. Being being homeless in Post Town, what's that like? Um, Post Town, uh, we kind of it's a lot more secretive. Um, but it's about the same thing. You get robbed if you don't mind. You don't like watch your stuff twenty four seven. They'll keep it on you. Uh, Everyone thinks that what's yours is theirs and they're entitled to it or, and everyone's selfish. No one helps each other. And, you know, we're on the same, we're on the same place. We're on the same boat. If we all just helped each other, I think things would be a little bit easier. We could get ourselves into a little better places, but. Yeah, I guess it's because of the whole hurt people hurt people, so. Did, did you have anybody supporting you when you, when you was in jail? No. no. Nobody? I got like six hundred dollar booking fee. <laughs> wow! <laughs> Accumulated. <laughs> You're only twenty eight. Only twenty eight. Yep. That's one county. <laughs> That's, this is Badlands, Poppy Lands, huh? Yeah. You got all the Spanish music. Oh yeah. What's your ethnicity? Um, I'm Wayne Cloke. I'm white, but I don't know what my background is. I'm definitely a mutt. I'm a mix of a bunch of a bunch of, a bunch of things. All right, young. What do you want to do with the rest of your life once you get off drugs? You plan on getting off them, right? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I'm gonna work in counseling with kids, and I'm gonna try to help help somebody. Well, when they, you know, try to help them not get to the place that I am right now. Yeah. You know? Right. Are you managing to eat out here? 
Yeah. Yeah, they feed, they feed you good out here. There's always some bees stopping by to give you food. Feed you food. Yep. How about sleep? No, don't sleep out here. <laughs> Definitely don't go to sleep out here. You'll wake up and everything will be gone. <laughs> you found some companions that you know out here or you just... Yeah, I found some good people or, you know, people that try to do the best they can and... Yeah, it's there are some good people out here that are just trying to survive like the rest of us. Once you get it, once you get off of drugs, it's the first thing you're going to do. Uh, well, I'll probably get a job, hopefully. But I have a felony now from Texas, so get a job. Yeah, get a job, get a place, and get my kids back. Those are all the right things. There you yeah. go. You know they're missing you. Yeah. No, they miss you. Yeah. Um, if you don't mind me asking, where, where's their dad at? You're like, Sleeping somewhere. <laughs> oh, uh, you're still together with them? No, I mean we're still friends. We come out here. Um, we come out here together, but either he's uh, I've known him my whole life. Just I don't know. I guess we're gonna get co-parent or something, but I'm definitely we're definitely not together. He's addicted, and he, you said he's on the streets of Kensington also? Yes. He's sleeping? Yeah. Mm -hmm. How long have you guys been together for? Well, I don't know if you guys are together now. You... Right, not together now, um, but ever no since my pregnancy, the beginning of my pregnancy, my first daughter, and it's for three years. Okay. Yeah. And how did you guys meet? We grew up together. Our parents knew each other, and they... um. We were, they were always together, and we always, you know, one of we were getting babysitted or babysat with each other, and so went to school together. So knew each other since the cradle. Did it, you guys start using together, or who started mm -hmm. first? Um, I definitely started first. He he's a late bloomer. I guess I got him into what he's into now. He didn't do he didn't do fentanyl until I did it, and. Or and I shoot up and he never did until I did and yeah I guess I'm the bad influence. You ever throw that in your face at all or no? What's you that? Know, does he ever throw that in your face or no? Oh yeah, for sure. Yep. Uh, how how did you end up getting him? You just you just told him yo try this or? No, he just wanted me to stop and I didn't. So he went and started. He's like, well, if you're gonna do it, so can I. And, I'm gonna show you what it's like to deal with you while you're in your highs. That's definitely something he's done. Just about wanted me. to be with you. It was love, huh? Uh, sure, you can call it that. Well, yeah, thought it was love, I guess. <laughs> right. And then drugs. So, what's your take on these drugs? Let me hear it. Oh, man. I don't even know what this shit is anymore. You know, heroin, heroin was heroin, heroin had a good pills, you know, there was ecstasy, all the good stuff, but out here you just got fake meth, bad, bad salts, what, you got the guaca flaca shit, you got dippers, and this shit that makes people go crazy. The other night we were sleeping, like, there's these pillar things, right? So we went and hit in one of those and we fell asleep, and uh, this guy was in one of the machines in mm -hmm. front of it. Right. Just making these obnoxious noises for hours, <laughs> and like you could, we walk out, and he was just fucking going ham. His pupils were dilated, and like <laughs> mm. <laughs> those my, my my ex and him got into it, but like it mm. makes people not human anymore. So it's just I don't know what this shit is. <laughs> How do you stay safe out here? Um, <laughs> I don't know, you gotta know how to watch your back or watch your, watch your friend's back or have a friend that'll watch your back when you, you're not because definitely, because I definitely have been at gunpoint and definitely got the shit beat out of me. So just, you gotta know how to defend yourself. Now, now you, you hang out on the L sometimes, Kensington? I mean, not the um, L, the, the F. F. I meant to say, I said the F. Yeah. No, walk, we walk. Do, do these cars there. try to approach you and, uh, yeah. All the time. Mm. All the time. How does that make you feel? Uh, I'm kind of used to it. 
I mean, they do it at home too, but it's, I mean, like, I have like a prostitute written on my face. <laughs> well, I don't know. <laughs> now, being offered $20 is just fucking, that's a low blow for sure. <laughs> I heard that's like the normal wage out here, to be honest. Me too. 300 at home. It's 300? Yeah. In Pottstown? Yeah. So if we get three hundred. <laughs> so you've done uh the three hundred dollar dates out there or Yeah, I've definitely had to support my habits, you know, that way at some point. what are those men like? The ones that uh provide you with that amount? Are they different from the the ones that try to lowball you? No, they're all the same. They're all the same? They're all the same. Any weird fetish requests? <laughs> uh yeah. Yep, definitely for sure. Like what? You got any example? You got um, you got anything, everything you can ever hear of. You got the guys that like, like you know, your uh, what golden showers you have. Guys that like to dress in your clothes while you're, <laughs> um, you know, pegging is. Pegging? No, I, I don't know what that is. <laughs> What's that? <laughs> what people know. Do you need to look it up? <laughs> Okay. <laughs> these these sick sick uh idealistic perverts. I don't know what to call them. I guess um you know everyone, everyone you know got their got their taste. It is what it is. I don't, you know, I don't necessarily mind it. Just they just gotta pay extra or something. I just, yeah, I just don't like. I just don't like being thinking. I, I just like be worth twenty dollars. Right. Um, so have you uh, worked on streets here? or nope. No. No. Nope. You, you just know, like, here is not worth it to you? or No, it's not like that. It's, I mean, when I when I did those dates at, at, up at home, I did them with a set amount of people. I'm not a very good people person. So when I did it, like, I, it was people that I knew. It was people that I known for quite a while. And it was people that and it was only the same five people throughout like a couple weeks so like having it spread out like it was it was an easy right. an easy to support my own habit with that amount of money only with only five people that's all I needed you know I don't I don't need the you know multiple people in a day or something like that I can't I can't do that I, I don't like people that much right. <laughs> how bad is your habit bad definitely bad how, how many bags do you have? Bad. <laughs> I don't even know what that is. I don't even know what that is you just showed me. It's two bundles. Oh that's oh that's what it looked like? Yeah, it's two bundles right here. Wow. Thirty two bags. Wow, you got that much? Yeah, and it'll be gone in like two days. How do you get that much? Scrapping, you know, said making money. And how much? Did, how much did that run for? Um, a buck sixty. A buck sixty. Eighty and eighty, yeah. You spent a buck sixty on that many drugs. Yeah, well, at home, this is about um three hundred twenty, three hundred twenty dollars, ten dollars a bag. And um, okay, you said they're going to be gone. What are you going to do with them? So I'll go home and sell some of them. Like I said, there's a lot of people at home with the same habit, and a lot of people went to jail that, you know, come out here for them, so I come out here and get them, go home, sell them, and get money and come back and do it all over again. Do you worry about getting arrested out of Town or anything? Like, didn't you just come, didn't not you just anymore. get released? Yeah, not anymore. I'm at, actually, after 11 years, I'm officially off of parole. That's good. Yeah. You said you're officially off of parole 11 yeah. years? Yeah, after 11 years, I've been oh. on probation and parole. That's good. Yep. You was in there since you was 17. That's yeah, since June. Ironic. <laughs> wow. Huh. Something. So what's next? As of right now, like I said, um, I don't know. It's, just, it's getting it's getting tough to you know when you have it gets harder to manage and 
you have more people, more than one person to support, and it's, I'm about ready to check in and just rehab, do my detox, and move on with my life. And uh, that'll, that'll be the right move, you know? Yeah. Who else do you have to support at this moment? My, my daughter's father. Your daughter's father, you still yeah. supporting him? I thought you weren't together. We're not together, but, we, you know, I don't, I, I can't, like, I don't abandon people. That's why we're still hanging out, so. And I help the people at home. Okay. I'll, I'll help anybody. I'll give anybody my last bag, and I never, I never expect it from any, you know, anybody else. But somebody's got to, you know, there's got to be some nice people out here. Do you want to be in life? Definitely better than I am right now. I don't know. I just want to still, I just want to help. That's all. It's like helping people. How long have you been selling drugs for? Shit. I mean, when you say selling drugs or just, you know, maintaining my own, my own addiction, but I guess it's, you know. At, the, at this point, that's what it's called, right? Yeah. Yeah. At this point, that's what it's called. Uh, so just a few years though. Ever since I learned that I could come out here and get them cheaper than I could at home. So you don't see yourself getting out of this no time soon? No, I do, actually, officially. I'm gonna be, I'm probably gonna be calling it quits here in about the next month, if not less. I was about ready to go and I was about to ready to, uh, I met myself yesterday. Oh my god. <laughs> well, you be careful. <laughs> yeah. Oh my. Kayla. Oh yeah. Be careful and you hide your stash. Yeah. If, if the cops was to come, you think they would care? No. <laughs> they wouldn't care at all, huh? No. Would they do anything? Nope. If they seen you drop your stash? Nope. Not here. At home, yeah, for sure. Pots Town, you'll get arrested, huh? Oh yeah. Wow. In Texas, you'll get a, a felony. <laughs> For in, a syringe, in Texas, you'll get a what? A felony just for uh, pro uh, pro uh, possession of paraphernalia. I think a lot of places you get felonies. <laughs> yeah, but not here. <laughs> All right, Kayla. Shit. I'm about to wrap it up. Yeah, it's cool. <laughs> what will you tell that. the youth out here ripping and running the streets, going through the same thing you're going through, Kayla? I don't know, I guess the money is easy and it seems like it's a fun life, but there's a lot better things out there. And if you do good and, you know, work hard that, you know, people will trust you and that's kind of worth more than people distrusting you and robbing book, book bags and, you know, just looking for your next high for sure. So, mm. You're very things. smart, Kayla. You were, dealt, you were dealt a bad, bad set of cards, but, mm. you know, I guess you made do. <laughs> what, you know, what you got? Yeah, definitely, definitely, you know, you got to. You keep working and you keep stabbing at it and you can be what you really want to be in life. I know you, you don't want to be out here. No, thank you. My name is ATM Fox. I make these videos for educational purposes only. You've been a wonderful interviewee for me. And all time media be praying for you. Thank you. Hi guys, USA Fox here. Like, comment, and subscribe. Thanks for tuning in.